All right, from college football to the pros, uh, the NFL players, playoffs rather, are upon us as well. And James Brown is here to break it all down. Uh, JB is also the host of the NFL Today and Inside the NFL on Paramount+. Plus. So, JB, we are going to get to Alabama and all that, but I want to start with the NFL playoffs. Um, some pretty exciting matchups that brought us to this point. Can you tell us about the matchups this weekend? And do any of the storylines hold any special interest for you? And interminably long slight for sure, but let me try to see if I can net it out. The first ever Week 18, of course, in the NFL did not disappoint. And, folks, you could hardly ask for more thrilling drama. Four games with playoff implications came down to the wire, and marie including an all-time classic on Sunday night between the Raiders and the Chargers that had all of us, well, most of us, cheering for a tie because if it was a tie, then Pittsburgh would be kicked out. Ultimately, Justin Herbert and the Chargers came up short and now the field is set so let's take a look at this Saturday afternoon the Raiders will take on the Bengals folks it's been an historically turbulent season for Las Vegas one where their off-field issues Vlad have dominated but through all of it Derek Carr has shown his qualities as a leader and folks he has his team playing what will be his first career playoff game since he, on the other hand turn to the dynamic duo of Joe Burrow and Chase, um, uh, 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 Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase, that is, to break the franchise's playoff curse. And to give you an idea how long it's been, now this comes courtesy of Nathan, Nathan Lutchell, Vlad and Anne Marie will love this. How long has it been since the Bengals won a playoff game? No one has ever texted their friend to talk about the Bengals, Anne Marie, because <laughs> the last time they won a playoff game was a year before the first text message was ever sent. The LSU alums hope to change that this weekend. That's courtesy of the young and talented Nathan Lutchwell. I had nothing to do with it. Anyway, let's take a look at the Saturday nightcap on CBS and Paramount Plus. It will feature the Patriots and the Bills in their third match matchup of the year. Now they split the season series. Bill Belichick, of course, one of the greatest coaches of all time, but history, believe it or not, is not on his side this year. Rookie quarterback Mac Jones has been sensational so far, but a rookie quarterback has never won the Super Bowl. Think Dan Marino. First step, they have to get past the Bills and their star quarterback, Josh Allen. Folks, they are keen to improve on last year's playoff run, bolstered by one of the league's premier defenses. Now, Super Sunday will oh, yeah. be a triple header. First, a depleted defending champion Buccaneer squad will host a scrappy uh, upstart Eagles team. Anne Marie would prefer a better title than that. Tampa Bay quarterback Tom Brady, <laughs> just about four years older than Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni. Next, on CBS and Paramount Plus, it's a matchup straight out of the 90s when the 49ers take on the Cowboys, two very decorated teams with historic pass and a dynamic present. Now, for a slightly younger audience, slime will be flowing all day <laughs> on Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon, that is, as they put in a special broadcast for the second year in a row. And folks, it is flat out fun. Sunday night, a marquee matchup as Surefire Hall of Famer Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers visit the multi-talented Kansas City Chiefs looking to go on to their third straight Super Bowl. Big Ben, the two-time Super Bowl champ, says he'll retire after this, his 18th season. Kansas City has been there done that mentality as far as the playoffs are concerned but don't pour dirt on Big Ben just yet he might have one more ride in him finally for the first time ever Monday night will feature playoff action it'll be the Cardinals mm. visiting SoFi Stadium in LA the site of this year's Super Bowl to take on the Rams a lot of NFL insiders pick the Rams at the start of the season but to say they have been up and down that just may well be an understatement <laughs> LA certainly has the talent on their team to win it all but but first, they have to get by the gunslinging kid himself in Kyler Murray. Boy, is a hey Vlad. I don't think I can say anything else. It's been a truly unpredictable season, and that was a long oh, read, Anne Marie. Well, but you know what? Uh, we, you know what? We still have some questions for you. Okay, JB. go ahead. We still have some questions for you. Um, so let's talk about those who did not mm. make the postseason. Are there any storylines there that you're following? Hey, Vlad and Anne Marie. You know what? And I wanted to take a second to do just that, Vlad, because so often we focus only on the winners. But I want to offer a tip of the cap to some. 
people and teams whose seasons didn't go so well but still performed admirably, laying a nice foundation for the future. Houston coach David Culley and defensive coordinator Lovey Smith did a remarkable job to finish 4-13, which is the record that they had last year, but they gutted the squad of superior talent, and his team this year played extremely hard, including the last weekend, this past weekend, where they played Texas Tough against the AFC's number one seed. That would be the Tennessee Titans. Coaching staff deserves another year there. I can't believe they're even talking about firing him. That would be criminal to bring him in for just one season when he's done a remarkable job. Dan Campbell, another resilient head coach with the Detroit Lions. He took a team that started 0-10-1, kept them focused and fighting passionately and will Detroit to a 3-13-1 mark. If you ever need inspiration, just go watch Dan Campbell in interviews because that's a coach that most players would love to play for. And finally, the Jaguars and their rookie quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. Hey, a rocky season to say the least, and we could get into all of it, but just suffice it to say that Trevor Lawrence, a young man, took a breath, he relaxed, and he got ready, hit reset, and he played a very nice season. So there it is for teams that I want to give a tip of the cap to with mm. their coach staffs. All right. Mm -hmm. Like that. Sounds very good. All right. So let us get back to where we started. Last night was the biggest game in college football, uh, the playoff championship game. Alabama fell to the Georgia Bulldogs. And so the big question is, how did Georgia beat Coach Saban, Nick Saban, and the Crimson Tide? How did they do it? It was a well-earned victory. No question about it. And without getting into all the esoterics and the X's and O's, suffice it to say the big picture <laughs> characteristics that that team had perseverance and attention to detail, Vlad and Anne-Marie. There's no question that Georgia, when they ran over Michigan, it was clear they wanted to get back for a rematch with Alabama. Georgia coach Kirby Smart, a UGA alum, has brought the first national title to Athens in four decades. Wow. We all know that he was previously on Nick Saban's staff for 11 years. Coach Saban now boasts a 25-2 and two mark against his former assistants with the only other loss coming earlier this season at Texas A&M. But that victory comes just weeks after the SE Championship. As I mentioned before, Georgia couldn't wait to get back. Great talent. Give them credit. Don't be knocking Nick Saban, perhaps the greatest college coach ever, but they got it done, Georgia. A tip of the hat to them. All right. Mm. All right. I mean, if 40 years. Mm, a long time. That is, that's been a long time. Yeah. Hey, and I know you and Amory were smiling about the text to thing, but it took a young Nathan Luttrell to bring that to the <laughs> to the table for the old fellow to sound hip, you know. <laughs> that's funny. That's great. I got to say, you know, I, I hadn't thought about Georgia like, this is this is just sort of how old I am and also the fact that I don't really follow college football, but mm -hmm. since Herschel Walker yep. played how for about the Georgia that? Bull Bulldog. And I don't, that was probably, so if we're talking 1980, right? That was yes, the last indeed. time. Yes, so indeed. So he would have been around. He would have, or at least been a freshman, I think. Yeah, right around the 89 time frame, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in that time frame. But you know what? College football is just great. The SEC still is the Dominant. best conference around. Make no mistake about it. Talent galore for sure. Yes. But hey, Anne-Marie, are you in Hawaii? Can I get one of those outfits to wear when I come in here to work with Vlad next time? Too cold in here, JB. You know the broadcast you know center. So, sometimes the temperature is just a state of mind. You uh, know, it's my way of coping with this, this, this January temperature. I'll just pretend like it's not happening. You know what? I got to tell Vlad, I love seeing you blush. Anyway, I know I'm over time here, so thank you <laughs> guys very much. It'd be great to have you, my brother. Thank Likewise. you very much.